English Lesson 6 Friday, October 15th of 2021 Tourism Job Interview Part 1 Tourism Job Interview Okay, this is the interview context explaining exactly what is going on in this interview. Okay, you have just finished university and you are applying for the position of hotel receptionist. You just graduated a master degree in tourism. Okay, so graduated you have to say first aided aided do 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 aided do aided gra gra graduated 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 okay and then you have master degree a master degree degree okay a master degree in tourism okay you just graduated a master degree in tourism you have applied at sheraton hotel during the interview you will meet the hr human resources director and the hotel manager okay these are the advices for the interview what you should do advices okay you always arrive early to the interview always arrive early you don't come late okay this is very rude it will get a bad a bad in presentation of yourself you know and it's much better if you arrive before the interview okay come prepared to know what can happen during the interview so coming prepared means that during this class over here okay I'm trying to prepare you for the interview you will have so I'm trying to think about most of the questions that somebody will ask you and also I'm trying to prepare for you the best responses you could give maybe it's not the best of the best but I'm trying so maybe we will uh, change that later on a little bit more but I'm trying to do something very positive out of this interview I'm trying to put myself as the interviewer to see if what you say is what I expect you to see to say or if you're just being transparent meaning that you are not really passionate you have to show a lot of interest okay so first thing you have to do you never sit down before you are invited to do so by the interviewer okay so you have to wait until he tells you please sit down the first thing you do is to try to shake hands with him or her. You have to give the right hand, okay? And you tell your name and say, for example, my name is, in your case, Tip. Or you give the full name, my name is Tip. Nice to meet you. All right? So this is a good introduction and you smile, all right? You have to seem as relaxed as possible. I know it's difficult, but you need to, to, to to, to have the person in front of you thinking that you are you're okay okay you're good because when you're going to see the customers you will also need to present yourself and to be okay all right be careful to see what you do with your hands okay you want to keep them over the table if you're sitting at a table or over your laps okay and stay calm you don't try to crush them you don't play with them okay you have to hold them in a calm way you have to be very calm okay 
you have to lean a little bit forward so that you're not laying back on your chair you're not sitting back just like you're on a sofa you are at work so you need to be like in direction of the, per the person you're talking you have to be very very concentrated and lean a little bit forward okay okay so now we're getting into the first part of the interview maybe there's one part maybe there's two parts maybe there's just only one now we're going to wor work on the first part which is they will try to speak in english with you so they will ask you in english if you would like to continue in english of course you know you have to know what to respond and how to respond to that okay also you you will be asked to present yourself and give your name your age and the educational courses university you went to after that they will maybe ask you something they will try to trick you meaning trying to ask you questions where maybe you didn't prepare okay so they are trying to expect a few things from you if nothing is happening maybe they will not take you but if you understand what they're expecting then maybe you will you will deliver something some some answers that will please them they will they want to hear some stuff when you are applying so why are you applying for this hotel for this hotel receptionist position okay so why then they will trick you by asking you your strength and your weaknesses okay so usually strength you got to make sure that you are know what how to tell them but the weaknesses this is tricky because you need to say something that is a little negative but saying it a positive way and then turn it around showing that you are willing to improve or this is what you're doing to improve or to change that okay all right so we will see that when it's the time to see this part then uh, they will ask you why should we choose you for this position so you have to explain why are you different from the others that are coming why are you different then they will ask you do you have any questions of course you never say no sorry i don't have any questions no you always have to find some questions there are some very simple questions you can ask about the job first and also about the future because if you show that you really want to evolve and do more inside of the company then they will think wow not only is he or is she coming for a job but also she or he wants to evolve to get a better job in the future okay maybe you want to have responsibilities you want to be a manager maybe okay so this is things you can ask at the beginning not ask to be a manager right away but ask if there's any possibility of doing that okay and then you always end an interview by thanking uh, the interviewer first for the time uh, they took to uh, um, for this interview and then you have to continue right away not expecting they do everything you have to ask them what will you when sorry when will you take your decision so you know that if they take a decision maybe they take the decision today or maybe they take it tomorrow maybe one week later maybe two weeks later okay so you know that there must be more than one interview maybe they have like 10 or 20 interviews so when will you take your decision this is important this this shows that you know that you need to follow up meaning that when you have a customer and he tells you something you, do, you need to do the follow-up for your customer so for the company you need to work for you need to show that you want to know what's going on after you don't just want to wait and see what happens okay and then you can continue saying should i call you back if they tell you one week should i call you back this means that if you do ask for that they say sure you can or maybe they say no don't call we will call you or we will send you an email with the response okay in case you don't get a response i will tell you what to do okay we will take that later on but normally what you should do is that they should i call back and they say no if after yeah if after one week nobody has done nothing no mails no nothing then maybe 
uh, you have to wait a few more days, two, three days more, and then you can call them or you can send an email. The best would be to try and call them and ask if they took any decision and if they're likely to take a decision very shortly or not. Okay? Maybe you have other interviews, so you can tell them, well, I have other interviews and I have uh, other offers. I just want to make sure that you took or not, or you, do, you, you had your decision taken or not. Okay? All right. Okay, let's start. So, the interviewer, to, to switch from Vietnamese to English, maybe is going to ask you one of those two questions. Do you mind if we continue the interview in English? So do you mind? Meaning, meaning, is it okay if we continue the interview in English? But is it a problem? So, is it, do you mind? Is it a problem? So, the response to do you mind, if you want to, to continue in English, you have to say no, of course. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. Okay, so no, of course. I will be glad to continue in English. I will be glad. I will be glad meaning that you are working in tourism. You need to use positive words, okay? So, yes, we can continue in English. That's one way to say it. But if you say, I will be glad to continue in English, meaning, yeah, there's no problem at all. I'm feeling just okay, all right? Or, instead of saying, do you mind if we continue in English, you can say, can we continue in English? Can we continue in English? The response would be, yes, of course. I will be glad to continue in English, all right? So, Try to be positive in the way you, you respond and make sure you understand what is the question. If they ask you with something that is negative, you have to say, no, of course. If they ask you with something positive, can we continue? Yes, of course. Okay. Can you present yourself? Give me your name, your age, your educational courses, university. All right. So, my name is Nguyen Tuyen. You can also call me Tip. I am Vietnamese, I'm from Thai Nguyen, I am 21 years old, so this is the age you're supposed to have when you finish school, okay? I just graduated with a master's degree in tourism, okay, let's do it again. I just graduated, so, aided, aided, do aided, do aided, graduated, Graduated. I just graduated. I just graduated. So you've got to say that with a normal speed. I just graduated. Then you have to continue with a, and then you have to say master's degree. Okay, let's start with the beginning. Master's. Mass. Ter. Master. Master. If there's an S, you're going to say Z at the end. Masters, masters, okay, with a master's degree. So here's like D degree, D degree, degree, a master's degree that goes together. A master's degree, a master's degree. I just graduated with a master's degree in tourism. from T-N-U-S. So, this is the capital letters of your university. T-N-U-S. From T-N-U-S. Penguin University of Science. Okay? I just graduated with a master's degree in tourism from T-N-U-S. Penguin University of Science. All right, so remember, as your school is supposed to be, so it, it, it's for your study. It's like a master degree, okay? So maybe they will ask you, the interviewer from HR, Human Resources, may ask you, how long did you study at TNUS? How long did you study at TNUS? And you can respond, I studied at TNUS for four years. I studied at TNUS for four years. Don't just respond, how long did you study at TNUS? Four years. That's short. That's very short. Okay. You need to make full sentences because you are, you are spending time with human resources. So 
if you say four years, it means that you don't really know how to make a normal sentence. Okay, so try to be. If you have you are with your friend and you say, oh, how long have you been studying in at TNUS? Oh, four years. That's okay. But you're in in an interview. Okay, so how long did you study at TNUS? I studied at TNUS for four years. Okay. All right. So like I told you at the beginning, you told me TNUS is the science university. But you are studying you are studying tourism. So I was like, why you want to go for tourism inside of the science? Okay. So most people, if they don't know university, will ask you, isn't TNUS a science university? You're talking about tourism. Yes, they teach science, but they also teach law, tourism, and other topics. So you don't remember which one, but other, maybe marketing, maybe sales, you don't know. But they do science, but they also teach law, law, tourism, which is your major. And you can say my major was tourism. You're coming to work in a hotel, so you have to say my major is or was tourism. Okay. All right. So now we're almost done for the first smaller part because it's a long one, okay? So they will ask you, why are you applying for this hotel receptionist position? So why are you applying for this hotel receptionist position? Okay, so here you've got to have, this is what we call arguments. Arguments are something that are the good points of why. Why are you applying? Because of that, because of that, because of that. All right. So, why are you applying for this hotel receptionist position? You respond, I think that it is a great opportunity. So, the accent is on two. Opportunity. Opportunity. All right. I think that it is, a, that I think that it's a great opportunity. So first, because you want them to feel that they are a very good company and that you wish to work for them. Okay, so I think this is, or that it's a great opportunity. You can continue saying you are a company known worldwide. You are a company known worldwide. So there, the have hotels all over the world. Okay, so with these two sentences, you're brushing uh, the landscape of a very nice hotel uh, group where there is, it's a great opportunity to go to that company. It is known all over the world and they have many hotels in Vietnam also. Okay, all right. Then you can also add, I would like to use my English skills to take good care of your customer. Okay, so this is a very, very positive way of trying to say that you will take good care. You, or you can say, uh, I would like to use my English skills to please your customers. So this is two very positive way of saying that you wish to take the best care possible, possible for their customers. You can even say my customers because they're going to be your customer. So you can you can say I would like to use my English skills to take good care of my customers. You're already putting yourself in the shoes of they are your customer, okay? But you can say your customer to the guy of the hotel, okay? And then you can say I am service oriented. Service oriented, okay? This is a key way of talking about yourself. Being service oriented means that you're doing everything to please the customer. So it means that everything you do in tourism, you're trying to make their stay being nice. You want them to have uh, responsive to their questions. If they need anything in the room, if they need any advices to for trips, if they need to have to pay for uh, their hotel room before they go away, maybe you can arrange that. So this is to be service oriented. Okay, remember that. Very important. 
Then they're going to ask you something very tricky. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Strength and weaknesses. So what is good and what is not so good? So I'm not saying wrong, not so good. I'll explain to you. So the first thing you need to do, you're very young. You're going to be 21 when you will start to work. And maybe you're shy, but you don't want to show that in the advantages, the strength. Okay. So you can say that you are very smiley. Yeah? You smile a lot. Okay. This is very important when you do tourism and you have to take good care of people. They want to find somebody very smiling. Okay. Or smiley. You have to say then that you love to take care of customers. So this is, this is all the advantages of you. You love to take care of your customers. Some people just go to work. But you want to take very good care of your customers. Okay. You can also say that you are very passionate about your job. I'm very passionate about my job. How are you showing your passion? Maybe they're going to ask you, uh, what do you mean passionate about your job? Well, I will show how passionate I am by knowing, for example, the restaurants around, the temples, the museum to visit, uh, having taxi phone numbers ready. Okay. This is how I can show that I'm passionate because if I know what to propose, to offer to the customers, then they will feel like I'm trying to help them, okay, the best way possible. Also, you, you want to say that you want to be, I'm a good ambassador of Vietnam, meaning that if you have a foreigner that is coming to Vietnam, maybe they don't know Vietnam. Maybe they come to international hotel because they want to have like the American or English or French type of hotel they're looking for. But maybe if they come to Vietnam, they want to learn something. So maybe you can teach them uh, if they just arrived from the airport, they never came to Vietnam. Well, you have to tell them that, uh, for example, crossing a road or street in Vietnam can be very complicated at the beginning, but it's not as complicated as it seems. So you have to explain to them how to do that. Okay. When you are in the US, when you are in Australia, when you are in France, usually you have like red lights, people stop and you pass. Or you have a zebra where you, you know, like a white uh, uh, way for pedestrians, for people walking, and you go through it and people stop. But in Vietnam, you know, there's a lot of cars, a lot of motorcycles. So maybe you have to explain how to cross. Okay, so we will do that later. We will do that. So. We will rehearse and, and say how you can do that for a customer. Okay, but you can show that you can be a good ambassador of Vietnam. So maybe it can be about food. Uh, if they are having uh, 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 American or English breakfast, continent what we call continental breakfast, coffee with milk, with uh, cereals, sausages, and stuff. Maybe if your hotel does Vietnamese specialties, you can tell them that maybe they can try. The, the Vietnamese way. Maybe they have pho bo, pho, um, any kind of soup or anything that uh, people can eat uh, in Vietnam. And maybe they can try a different coffee from the usual coffee and have, uh, uh, have a Vietnamese coffee. All right. Try to tell them to do stuff that they can try. If they don't like it, it's okay. But uh, maybe you want them to try or they would like to try. But you have to offer them. So maybe they don't think about it. And then if you tell them, maybe they will try. Okay. And, you, and, and ask them after. Say, oh, how was it? Did you like it? Okay. So this is a good way of taking care of your customers. Okay. Then you can tell them also that uh, a very good strength is that you are a fast learner. Meaning that as soon as you do a mistake, you want to learn not to do that mistake again. You want to do the thing next time you do want to do that, you want to do it perfectly. Okay. So I'm a fast learner. Okay. So if they ask you for explanations, you say, I always try to learn because I'm passionate about my job. Okay. So it comes back to passion. Okay. So this is what you are a fast learner. And also because you want to make sure 
that you give the best service possible. I want to make sure I give the best service possible. Okay? So all that is the positive. All right? Now, the cons. So the weaknesses. When you give a weakness, it has to sound soft. You don't say, I don't talk very good English. Or you don't say, uh, I'm, I'm so shy. No. What you do is, for example, here you say, I am a little shy. But I'm working on it. So you start by something saying, saying something that is a little negative. I'm a little shy. A little shy means I'm not shy, so I'm not so shy. Okay? I'm a little shy. But I'm working on it. I'm working on it means I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to not to be so shy. Alright? So I'm a little shy, but I'm working on it. So you have to because you are shy, so you need to Make sure that they get the point. Yes, you know you're a little shy, but you're working on it. Okay, so say, how, how are you working on it? Well, for example, I try to practice my English talking to random tourists in the street. I just go to tourists and I try to talk. At the beginning, I was like so shy to do so. And now it's becoming more and more natural because I know that when I work in the hotel, I need to lose uh, this way of being shy and being able to talk to them, respond to them, and smile at them. All right. So this is the way you talk about something negative, a positive way. All right. Then you're young, you're coming out of school, so you say, for example, I need to get more experience. Experience. Okay. So maybe. People would say, I don't have a lot of experience. This is negative. If you say, I don't have a lot of experience, it means that you're not good for the job. So this is not what you want to say to them. You want to say, I need to get more experience. So you're telling them you don't have a lot, but you want to get more experience. Okay, so this is positive. So you say, I need to get more experience, but I want to improve my skills. All right, so you start with something negative. Say, but I want to improve that. I want to improve my skills. The skills can be English, can be communication with the customers. It can be uh, know how to use the computer program of the hotel. It means, um, know all the procedures, what to do when clients, customers arrive, when they pay, when they go away. Okay, so all this is how you want to improve those skills. Okay, you want to improve my skills, those skills. And you can say and add that I did a lot of practices in different hotels along my studies. So during the university, you are practicing working in hotels. So I did a lot of practices in different hotels along my studies or during my studies. That's two ways of saying it. Okay. All right. So this, you need to work a lot on that. Okay. This is the end of the lesson six. This is the first part. Okay. So I will see you uh, next Tuesday. And we will go into details on more, more things. We will continue the interview. We will review that. I will try to make you uh, act like you are coming to the interview and I'm the interviewer. Okay. And then we will get into more like doing, uh, pretending I'm really the interviewer and I'm going to try to, um, make you feel uncomfortable. I'm going to try to show myself like I'm like, I don't want to talk. I'm mad or this or that. And I'll see how you react. So I will show you ways to react and you are supposed to like adapt to who is in front of you. All right. End of lesson, end of lesson six, part one. See you next week, next Tuesday.